Hello and welcome to another episode of Blue Alpine TV. In today's episode, we will talk about the Lightning Network, the Lightning Network and its wallets and what type of wallets are out there that you can already start using. For the podcast listeners, make sure that you join our Telegram channel. Um, it's for free. The important part is uh, essentially in order to get screenshots, which I will share in the Telegram channel of these different wallets, you should be part of the Telegram channel. That way you can kind of follow along. But let's jump right into this uh, topic. Essentially, uh, it says here, development of Lightning mobile wallets promises faster Bitcoin payments. As you know, um, I'm always a kind of an advocate of saying, look, in order for Bitcoin cryptocurrencies in general to succeed, what we will need is kind of a killer application, an application that we will be able to use in daily life. Now, in Bitcoin's case, we have currently a couple of problems. One of the problems is obviously scalability. The other problems is transaction cost and then the speed as well well. Uh, Lightning Network promises to kind of solve all of these three problems at once and is currently still, if you will, in, in kind of a beta stage that is pretty public. So you can actually do transactions on the Lightning Network if you want to. But in order to kind of uh, be ready once the Lightning Network is out, obviously all the wallets and the applications have to be out there as well. So this is essentially why we're looking at um, these different wallets. So we have three wallets today that we're looking at. And um, as I said, I will share the screenshots in the Telegram channel. So the first wallet is called Eclair. And Eclair is actually um, uh, from France. It uh, means, I think, even lightning in French. And um, it has been developed by Paris-based Async and is kind of a lightning-ready Bitcoin wallet that is uh, pretty open source, so you can already check it out. We will uh, look at it um, in a second. So, well, essentially now, um, for the podcast listeners, we're currently looking at GitHub at Eclair's uh, code here. And there are already a couple of screenshots that you can use. And there is some details on what type of channels are open, what types of what types of nodes and, and um, local and all channels. Now, what is um, kind of I, I want to say it's, it's probably one of the bigger ones. It has around 3000 downloads so far. And um, says here, the Eclair wallet is a real lightning node, not a remote control app for a node running on a server. Users can transfer money from a checking to a savings account by closing channels, generate lightning invoices and pay lightning invoices through QR codes or lightning invoices. Now, however, Eclair is an interesting project, but you can only send money out. You cannot receive money back with this wallet. So keep this in mind when you're kind of doing that. They have uh, kind of deliberately done that. The idea was to kind of get up and running quite quickly. And obviously, if you only implement parts of the functionality of a wallet, you are much faster. So this is kind of the thinking behind it. It looks pretty cool. Uh, if you look at the contributors, you can see 21 contributors, you see 1,200 commits, and you see that uh, a different 597 people have starred it. And uh, star on GitHub essentially means that uh, as some people are following this project and might even contribute. And this is always kind of an important uh, thing to look at if you want to kind of judge a uh, open source project. They are fairly active on uh, GitHub, you, as you can see here. Uh, for the podcast listeners, we're looking at the commit history of the last few weeks and months and uh, kind of the code frequency that they have uh, added to uh, the project, which is looking fairly okay. Uh, next up, we have uh, something called Bitcoin Lightning Wallet. It's an uh, SPV BIP37 based wallet developed by Anton. Uh, Kumai Gorodsky and um, it is currently an Android application and first of all what does SPV mean? SPV is simple payment verification um, which is essentially the idea that you will need something um, if you want to kind of uh, make transactions fast or kind of use Bitcoin in a fast manner, uh, what you want to do is, is not download the entire blockchain because that will take way too long. So uh, SPV is actually looking only at the headers of the blocks. And this BIP37 is, I think, a Bitcoin improvement protocol or improvement idea. I think I have it here even open. Um, it is... Uh, Essentially, uh, says here, 
an improvement in terms of um, SPV clients have to download the entire contents of blocks and all broadcast transactions, that's what I said, only to throw away the vast majority of the transactions that are not relevant to their wallets. This slows down their synchronization process, wastes users' bandwidth. Now, this BIP37 is kind of trying to improve this even further so that the kind of um, functionality gets faster. It uses something called um, Bloom filtering or a Bloom filter. I will link this up so you can look it up on Wikipedia what exactly it does. Fairly technical here and kind of explains what exactly or how exactly it is working to achieve that. Uh, it says here for the Bitcoin Lightning wallet, it, it features a full Lightning network support that provides for both on and off chain network transactions and is available in both testnet and mainnet. Users can send and receive Bitcoin almost instantly through dedicated channels. One unique quality of this wallet is that it uses a system of storage tokens to store channel backups and delay refunding transactions anonymously. And if we look at here, if we look here at the um, at the uh, Google Play Store, we can see that uh, well, actually, it's it's him, it's Anton, who has uh, kind of uh, distributed this, it has fairly good ratings, although only thirty eight uh, reviews in total, and has uh, around more than thousand installs. So this is an important number that you want to check out the installs number and also the updates number, as well. So the uh, kind of goal here is um, that the, the people who are supplying this application and working with this application will update it regularly and that a lot of people are using it. That's kind of a good sign. Um, the screenshots here I will share uh, in the Telegram channel so we can go through them in the detail um, a bit further down the road. Now next up and last up we have something called Raw TX or Raw Transactions. It's a mobile lightning network wallet for Bitcoin that allows users to send and receive testnet Bitcoins on the blockchain and lightning network. And if we look at this application, we see that the creator is raw TX or raw transactions. And uh, I think this is an anonymous, uh, either a group or an individual that is working on this. And as you can see here, 100 plus downloads and has been actually uh, updated today. So fairly up to date here again. Again, the screenshots I will share in the Telegram channel. Now, there are some other uh, Lightning wallets in this article mentioned, but I think these three are the most interesting ones. And what is extremely important for you guys is that currently Lightning Network is still a kind of in beta. You have uh, those 2,135 open nodes and five and a half thousand channels. And there is a lot of like uh, interest and excitement about this Lightning Network going on. So before you kind of dive in and send uh, all your savings and all your major Bitcoin through the Lightning Network, be aware that this is still kind of a test uh, environment, that this can still go wrong, that the user experience will be bad, that even the wallets can crash from time to time and transactions and money can be lost. So please be sure that you're um, uh, only playing really with play money with very small amounts to test these things out. Nonetheless, very exciting stuff. I think slowly but surely we're getting there in terms of user experience and in terms of applications that we can actually use in daily life. Because without that, the Lightning Network is just that. It's just a technology upon a technology. And what we really need is people using this different technology to uh, be it for daily transactions or store of value or whatever in the end it will run into uh, in essentially it just has to develop into this thing that gets used by people and not just by you and me the, the crypto ecosystem but also other people that are wanting to try out crypto and with that guys we're already at the end of today's episode make sure to like this video subscribe to the channel subscribe to the podcast and join the telegram channel where i'll share the screenshots with you guys and i'll see you tomorrow take care bye